together both kind of the infrastructure side and the app dev side, and Michael can explain some of this because we've had a, a good discussion, Michael, I think a couple of days ago about how you viewed some of that. And at times you're looking at organizations that are building out the infrastructure, or they're building out the application, but not really considering how that applies or impacts the infrastructure and vice versa. And the finger pointing and the lack of integration can become a real problem. But maybe before we do that, first I wanted to uh, say thank you very much, Michael, for, for joining us today, for being a great customer with us. And, uh, you know, we, we just look forward to continuing to grow. So maybe just uh, if you could go through a little bit of background on yourself, and then we can talk about the opportunities with, uh, with Panera today. Oh, uh, sure. Thank you, Jim. I really appreciate it. And I'd like to give a shout out to Amanda and Matt. Uh, Matt. Uh, they really make it happen for us. Uh, if it wasn't for them and uh, their customer advocacy, we would not be in the position that we are today. So really appreciate their help. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. Yes. So maybe, so, like, maybe yeah, a little bit just on your background. Sure, absolutely. So I've been with Panera almost three years. Uh, I run their infrastructure group uh, along with IT operations, information security, and uh, regulatory and compliance. Um, so it's kind of interesting. This is my first uh, uh, gig in the restaurant industry or the retail industry. Uh, I worked in financial services my entire career over 30 years. So I was uh, in various banks and savings and loans, as well as I was A.G. Edwards, Wachovia, and Wells Fargo. We went through that whole journey together. And uh, so my background is uh, infrastructure and enterprise architecture, as well as middleware. And uh, it's been, you know, uh, I've really tapped into those experiences uh, ever since I've been at Panera, because uh, we had a tremendous amount of technical debt. And we had to basically uh, rebuild our core and cafe infrastructure because the whole, uh, the whole topology had changed with the digital transformation. They basically had a point of sale platform, a wide area network that was designed for credit card transactions. And the, basically the systems were designed uh, to not necessarily uh, talk to the core infrastructure uh, on a real time basis, which all that has changed uh, with the digital transformation. And even, Michael, maybe uh, we could uh, talk a little bit about, because it's, it's pretty interesting to think about it. Four or five years ago, Panera and the CEO uh, did not necessarily view technology as a strategic anything. It wasn't looked at as a strategic enabler. And now you look at the CEO and the board and the executive team along with IT, they view IT as very strategic to what they're doing, not just strategic to infrastructure, but IT as a strategic enabler to the business. So maybe you could talk a little bit about how that mindset has changed and how Panera has really changed from a food company to both an IT enabled food organization that's changing and disrupting uh, you know, the, the food industry today. Oh, no, by all means, Panera is definitely uh, disrupting uh, the industry and taking a leadership role in terms of the technology that they're implementing to overall improve the customer experience. And it was definitely the case four or five years ago. Uh, Ron Shaker, CEO, basically said, listen, we're not a technology company, we're a food company. Uh, however, you know, with uh, the evolution of uh, mobile and wearables and things like that, as well as the change in the overall makeup. Uh, uh, millennials are very demanding um, and want uh, services, technology services, wherever they go. So we really have, are a good example of uh, a company becoming a technology company that so happens to sell food. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really, it's crazy. I mean, even in the, so you guys were, you were just uh, recognized uh, with another award, you've, you've won a number of different awards relative to innovating uh, the, the food industry. And uh, I believe, I'm not sure what Blaine, Blaine's title is. Uh, he is the EVP of IT transformation. So Blaine's background was, he was formerly the uh, uh, president of Papa John's. And uh, he came to know Panera through, really, he was interested in becoming a franchise owner. And he and Ron 
uh, started putting their heads together, and I would say that Blaine uh, played a very instrumental role in changing the technology relationship uh, that we had with the business itself. And that's where the uh, concept of Panera 2.0 came about. Ron recognized that people were actually walking away. They were offering great food. However, the lines were out the door. Uh, everything was backed up. There was a lot of disruption. If you go to a Panera 1.0 cafe, you really know that. You're standing in line or you're standing in the area that we affectionately call the mosh pit, which is you play the game, find your food. So we wanted to change all that, and that was the notion of Panera 2.0. It was about increasing the desire of the food, but reducing the friction to get the food whenever you wanted it, uh, wherever you wanted it. And that's where we've looked at implementing uh, the kiosk. The kiosk is basically an enclosed credit card reader integrated iPad uh, that allows a customer to basically uh, order their own food. And if they are tied to our loyalty program, they can retrieve their favorites, their past order, and basically place that order. The other concept was rapid pickup, where you could use your mobile device and order your food and schedule when you want to go pick it up, and it's there waiting for you in the shelf. In fact, that innovation occurred really directly with Ron and Blaine, uh, who have played an integral role in Panera 2.0. Uh, Ron's story is that he used to drive every day to the cafe, uh, his son would be there, uh, he would pick up the phone, call the cafe manager, place the order, drive into the parking lot, his son would jump out of the car, run into the cafe, get the order, he would run, you know, drive the car around to the other end of the building, pick his son up and away they went. It was like, wow, great, this is a great experience. You know, and I need to share this, and this would be a great way uh, to reduce that friction. As well as with the kiosk itself, what we've found is it takes, uh, you know, some people want to go directly to the counter and, and order their food. They want that Panera warmth. They want that relationship between themselves and the associate. However, some people are very strapped for time, so they go directly to the fast lane, place their order, and then go pick it up. In fact, what we've found through the kiosk is that they typically uh, customize the order more, and the, the size of the check is actually more than it would be at the counter. So, all good things. And some of the things you were even talking about, maybe you could talk a little bit how you guys view, you know, uh, kind of the, the entire cycle, the life cycle of, of the deployment, uh, where you're looking at both the infrastructure and the outcomes. Uh, we're talking about even, you brought up us even thinking about not only building technology pox, but building, and you kind of uh, stated, I think it was more of a true solution pock around a cafe that includes both the IT infrastructure, the app, so as you continue to iterate, that we can be testing out different things. Uh, also, maybe you could talk on uh, the analytics side. You, you know, you, you mentioned how kind of in that spirit of continuing to innovate and iterate uh, that from an analytics perspective, you're, you're collecting some data, but you're not really doing a whole lot with it at this point. Is that correct? No, exactly. Um, you know, with where we're at right now, um, you know, it's been a bit of a journey, and, and we see worldwide in asynchrony uh, working along with us through this journey, through the entire life cycle, and taking something from concept all the way to re reality. What we saw of great value was the usage of the ATC. Uh, we basically created our technology stack, which is the Cisco ISR router, their blade, the Meraki switches and access points, and we proved out the technology within the ATC. So we refer to it as we incubated the technology within the ATC. Once we did the smoke testing and we felt like we had a minimum viable product, we then transplanted it into our innovation center, where we have a mock-up cafe. And this was really where we could do the prototyping and the testing to assure that we can actually run the business. And then ultimately, we took that stack and released it into the wild, as we put it, into one of our markets to assure that we can actually run the business with that. And that was solely the infrastructure aspect of it. And you alluded to earlier that we worked through two or three different software developers, and that was quite the case because they didn't have a holistic viewpoint. 
they were sort of siloed in terms of looking, I'm just here to, de to develop the application and then move on to the next thing. Um, what we find is those vendors typically have a viewpoint that if there are deficiencies within the application, both performance scale, resource utilization, uh, they'll just throw more hardware at it. With working with Worldwide and Asynchrony together, we have a much more holistic viewpoint where it's a balance. We're assuring that the application is leveraging capability from the infrastructure, but we're being efficient in both cases. And really, it's no longer about availability, recoverability. It's all about performance uh, and uh, digital performance management these days. So really having that synergistic viewpoint uh, is really an enabler and you avoid the finger pointing. And I believe that if the infrastructure and application working together early on, creating the that you're integrating or baking these capabilities into the product rather than ultimately bolting them on. Yeah, and that's, that's great. One of the things, uh, Michael, talking to you and John at lunch uh, the, the day a couple months ago, they were talking about they're rolling out both their, their, their cafes, some of them are owned by franchisees and some of them are owned by the Panera company. And the, the challenge is, in some cases, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that the cafes, they're not prepared to keep up with IT and how IT is enabling the business. So it's pretty cool to see where IT is viewed, has got not only a seat at the board level within Panera, but IT is enabling so fast that the cafes have to adjust their process and some of exactly. these different cafes to be able to keep up with the technology that they're rolling out, which is pretty cool. Yeah, now that we can you know, basically demonstrate that you know, uh, 130,000 digital transactions per day, we definitely have proven the point that uh, we can get transactions or orders into the cafe. But the other aspect of it is our cafe operations, basically re-engineering their processes, production lines, how they you know, maintain integrity within the operations itself. And it's also sort of exposed some rather creativity that uh, the, the, the management within the cafes have uh, implemented in terms of turning off kiosks or turning off point of sale so that they can throttle the orders into the kitchen. So, uh, you know, on one side, you're saying increase the number of transactions. On the other side, it's, uh, you know, it's like, well, I can't, you know, handle that much throughput. And uh, so it's a, it's a great problem to have, uh, but it's one of which that, you know, we need to balance because uh, the heart and soul of digital transformation is all about the customer experience, the accuracy of the order, the speed, um, and uh, that's something that we hold dear. Wow, it's fantastic. That's, it really is, it's very cool to see how it's enabling and how fast everything's going. Maybe just uh, in closing, you talk a little bit about just some of the results that you guys have had, just in regards to, to the improvement and kind of throughput, and then, and then some of the recognition that you received uh, in some of the areas. No, uh, we're definitely seeing you know approximately 130,000 orders per day uh, on the, the digital channels on our omni-channel platform, and we're seeing uh, you know 2.2 million downloads of iOS apps and Android apps, um, you know, uh, and that continuously grows. And uh, we feel as though that we're going to be close to competing against the big three pizza uh, chains. Uh, from a digital perspective very, very soon here. So uh, in some cases, when you look at a Panera 2.0 store versus a Panera 1.0, the Panera 2.0 store outpaces the 1.0 uh, in gross sales by 30%, which is amazing. Wow. The other thing that we're seeing is the uptick in cafe-based delivery. So we're gonna go head to head with Jimmy John's in terms of delivering our product anytime you want it, uh, wherever you want it. And that's something really exciting this particular year. But also the catering hubs also take that friction out of the, out of the cafes uh, so that we can centralize catering uh, and provide multi uh, services across multiple cafes. So we refer to it as hoovering. 
So what we want to do is hoover the sales as much as we possibly can across this omni-channel rather than just focusing on the number of cafes that we have within a particular region. It's like, what can we do to 